Hi, I'm Tom Henriksen from the Agile Online Summit, where we bring great agilists to the world. Welcome to our community spotlight, where we shine the light on many of these great agile communities that help promote the summit. Today, we're going to have a discussion with Isaac Garcia from Coaching Agile Journeys. Isaac, introduce yourself to the people here at the Agile Online Summit. Hi, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here. This is a wonderful event. I love getting together with like-minded people. I'm so glad that you're here. So as Tom said, my name is Isaac Garcia. Coaching Agile Journeys is our group. We are a virtual community that's been going for four and a half years. We love bringing great content to this great community. And that's what I love. I love community. So it's a passion of mine. Tom, you know that. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) I do, Isaac. I I enjoy your community and I'm I'm a big fan. And I, you know, I think times like these, it's really great to see thriving communities like you you guys have been doing virtually. Because I know, I'll just say, as I've been talking to other, you know, community promoters like yourself that are, you know, organizing communities, they are, you know, they're having to learn from like what we do with the summit and you do with coaching agile journeys that, you know, this is the way it goes. And, you know, you have to adapt. And I guess as agilists, we know we have to inspect and adapt, right, Isaac? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's, it's been wonderful to be able to help other communities in this transition. See, we started, Tom, a long time ago when I realized I was moving to somewhere that didn't have a local community. I used to be in one of those blessed cities where you have so many great agilists around that you can meet up together for actual lean coffee or pizza yeah. or whatever and swap ideas. And I realized I'm going somewhere where there isn't. And what we found at Coaching Agile Journeys, there's a lot of people who find themselves isolated. Maybe they can't get together and and a virtual community has been great for them. Now everyone's a little bit isolated with COVID. And so it's just been a natural progression for us. But you're exactly right. We've all had to, this year especially, adapt everything that we do to make it more friendly to remote. And, And I actually love that. I think I think the whole online virtual space has really grown. And so I know that what you've done with the summit and what we've done with Coaching Agile Journeys, it's just really bringing up everything that we can share some of that. Hey, here's some ways to do virtual community effectively. So I just love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just great to see how things have changed. So, so you kind of alluded to this a little bit, Isaac, but how long have you been involved with Coaching Agile Journeys? So Thomas started about four and a half years ago. I actually took a class with Lisa Adkins, who wrote the book Coaching Agile Teams, and the class was on that Coaching Agile Teams. Afterwards, she set up a call that she facilitated of all the participants to say, let's look back at the last week. What did you learn in your Agile coaching experience? And so we talked about it. And from there, she stepped back and said, if you want to keep these going, you can. And anybody want to volunteer? And little did I know, there was this awkward silence. Everybody kind of looked around and I raised my hand and said, I'll keep it going. I'll set up the call to keep it going. That call evolved and adapted over time to turn into coaching agile journeys. Wow. And, and it really started with that heart of let's get like-minded people together mm-hmm. and share what we're learning and how we're growing and experiencing. And that still resonates today. That's amazing. That's a great story of kind of how it all started from a class and just kind of building that community from there yeah. and a, of course, having Lisa Atkins involved. I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, I've read her book. Um, she's, you know, she's really influential in the community. I mean, yeah. not too many people haven't read her book, I guess, in our community. So it's, it's great right. that, that kind of started there. So that's excellent. Yeah, it, it's really cool to meet other Agilists who, when you say coaching Agile teams, they go, I've read that book or I've taken that class or I love Lisa's stuff. And yeah. it's that kind of, it's that common thread that I think ties a lot of us together. Because I know for me, that was the launch pad. I was kind of, I was getting there, but boy, coaching Agile teams, the class and the book, both really accelerated my my curve and created what is now my home community. Yeah, it's excellent. So so as you talk about this community, Isaac, just kind of give us an idea what you guys do in your community. What types of activities, what types of things that you're doing? Well, it started with trying to follow what I saw. So we started with the class. And then we followed what like scrum gatherings, there were a bunch of scrum gatherings in the city where I lived Mm -hmm. and they bring a speaker and that speaker would come and they would present something and then there'd be Q and A. And so it really started with that vision. And so that's what we still do today. We try to have one speaker a month who comes in and just like a scrum meetup or something would, would share their content, their story, and then would do questions and answers. But I'll tell you what's cool is especially in this last year, we've seen a, 
a hunger for more interactive kind of engagements, right? More interactive virtual sessions. So yeah. to, to meet that need, we've started doing monthly lean coffees, mm -hmm. which have been awesome. It's a smaller group, but the smaller group gets together. We do a lean coffee. We talk agile and, and follow that format. It's wonderful. And then we started seeing our speakers really be more, more willing to ask people questions and say, go ahead and unmute and, and tell me your feedback. Or even our last session, the speaker shared the stage and said, I've shared what I thought. Does anyone else, I know you guys know this stuff. Does anyone else have any input? And, and those wow. have been really exciting sessions because it's no longer one person, I will teach you. It's yes. becoming more like a fireside chat. We're all sitting around mm -hmm. and saying, you know, that reminds me of, and then someone else, and then someone else. And so it's moving more in that direction. I think there's always going to be a, I have a story and I want to share it space, yeah. but I love seeing the response to that and the, the back and forth that's really starting to happen a lot more. So it's, it's an exciting development. I think people are becoming comfortable in zoom. They know how to unmute themselves. They know to stay muted. If they're not talking, yeah. Yeah. we're learning these things. So it's exciting. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're in uncharted territories, learning all sorts of new things. So it's great. Yes. So, so I guess, Isaac, as we, we talk to other community facilitators like yourself, what types of tips do you have for people out there? Maybe that they're, they're having troubles with this transition or maybe yeah. they're not getting enough people at some of their events or running out of ideas. What types of tips yeah. do you have, Isaac? Yeah. So I think, I think for sure, uh, always continue listening. Always listen to your people and and realize the ones who are coming to your events or who you're connected with, even if they just subscribe to your email list, they're connected to you for a reason, right? I think now more than ever, it's easy to, to not attend something. It's easy to unsubscribe from emails. If they're connected to you, give them the opportunity to share with you what they need and what they want. We do at least an annual survey. Some years we do two surveys of our entire community yeah. to say, how can we bring better content? What type of sessions would you like to see more of? How can we evolve to meet your needs better? So I would say to facilitators, listen to your community, find a way to connect and really listen to them. And then I would say, always be open to adapting. I, I know that a lot of groups at the beginning of, of COVID, right, not knowing where the future was, simply said, well, we'll just, you know, push pause. Yeah. And then and then found themselves in this weird spot of like, we're not meeting, everyone's in a weird spot. Should we start meeting? What does Zoom even look like? Just be willing to to adapt as the need goes. And and really, I think this is true, and I think you'd agree with this, Tom. You've got to love your community, right? The best thing I can tell you, and it comes through in how you help it, is you've got to love it. You've got to love the group of people and the value that they bring, not to you but to the group, right? And if you really love them, you're going to serve them, you're going to listen to them, and you're going to find ways to better your events to meet their needs. And so I think if that's true, you know, work with a, a heart of love, serve your community. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if it's small, recognize that you can still provide value for the few and that can still make a big impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really important as you talk about, Isaac, that connection, that if people have that connection, they're less likely, like you mentioned, to unsubscribe or, or not show up for the next, you know, maybe it's a, just a Zoom call or like you're doing something like a lean coffee. I mean, those are, that's so important to have that and maintain it probably in this, you know, this stressful pandemic where people's, yes. you know, their lives have been changed and, and things are really different. They need that kind of consistency, don't they? Yes, absolutely they do. Yes, consistency really helps. And I think that's one of the things that's hard as a facilitator is sometimes you feel boy, I just don't, you know, do I keep doing it or what do I do? And, and that's really, it goes back to, I think, the love of the community, right? I show up, there have been times I've shown up to those lean coffees where I'm just tired. Maybe I just got off of a tough meeting, mm -hmm. but after 10 or 15 minutes with that group of people talking, I'm energized. I yeah. feel filled up. And when I hang up the phone, I say to myself, that really mattered. I mm -hmm. feel alive now. I'm ready to go to that next meeting, whatever the next thing is. Yep. And so it's a, it's a rejuvenating thing if you allow it to be. Don't let it be heavy. If you find yourself really being dreading, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Then, you know, find help. I would say mm -hmm. find, find people to come alongside and help lift some of that burden. Yep. But uh, if, if you find the community is a burden for you, um, boy, you know, check the, check the why. Because yes. if you really love it, you really believe in it, mm -hmm. it becomes that labor of love and it makes it a lot easier to 
stay involved. Yeah. Well, and it, it's one of those things I heard a couple other people talk about this, about how important like for, you know, people building a community or even for like people who are scrum masters or agile coaches, they need to, you know, be concerned about their self-care. You know, maybe they need to take some downtime. Maybe they need, you know, if it's a nice day, go out for a walk or something or get some fresh air, maybe get a, you know, just get a glass of water and just kind of relax for a minute before you, you know, jump into that next thing. So your, yeah. your mind, and, and like you said, you don't dread it, that you're ready yes. to go and your energy is ready yeah. there. I can't tell you, I was at, a, I was at an open, open leadership network conference and, and I believe it was Bob Galen was running one of our little sessions yeah. and he, he brought up the question, self-care. You know, we preach it and we all were nodding. Yes, of course we do. He said, <laughs> how many of us actually do it? And we all yep. went, oh, it's so <laughs> important because, you know, we think to ourselves and, and you might even get lost in this, right? I got to, I have to do this for the community. I love the community so much. I have to do this. Yeah. But if you find yourself getting burnt out, right, you're not going to be able to be valuable to the community, to your clients, to whatever, mm -hmm. your family. If, if you're not really taking care of yourself, we have to take care of ourselves. Uh, it's so important. So I was one of those who raised my hand. and was like, yeah, I need help with that. I need, I need coaching on yeah. having better self care because mm -hmm. I sometimes overcommit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're people yes. pleasers. A lot of us and just want to say, yes, yep. We are. Mm -hmm. yep, I'll do that. Yep. Yep. Get yep. Us into trouble. So I guess Isaac, I just want to wrap up with it. what kind of closing thoughts do you have to share with all the other community facilitators and promoters out there? Yeah. So I just, it's, it's, it's so important what we are doing, especially in the heart of the pandemic. There was a lot of people who were unsure. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of questions of what the future would look like. And, and what came up at the beginning of it, I heard several people ask the question, does Agile even matter anymore? And I think for me, it matters now more than ever. But what also matters is connection. And whether that's virtual, whether it's in person, the work we do as facilitators to bring people together without an agenda, without trying to sell people stuff, bringing them together, that human connection. Now more than ever, we need that. We need effective communities that can go forward and that can bring people together around an idea or a cause and that allow them to feel like they belong. It is so important that we create that space of belonging. So I'll just say to all of you who, who lead those facilities, keep up the good work, keep up the yes. connections of people, provide a place for people to connect and be human. You're doing a great service, not only to the Agile community, but really to the world and your local community, wherever that is, even if it's remote, uh, keep mm -hmm. up the good work. It's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. Excellent. Excellent. Isaac, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, Tom. Thank you for having me. Yes. On behalf of Isaac, I am Tom Hendrickson for the Agile Online Summit. Thank <laughs> you.